Well, hey everybody, it's 2024 and the question is, has the budget action camera market actually started to leap forward with their technology to give us better products? Well, today we're gonna to look at the IceFox 4K dual screen action camera. Is it actually worth it? Well, let's delve into this action camera and see, does it do all the things that we require in 2024 on a budget? I got the Ice Fox 4K action camera, dual screen. Ah, what to think about the image quality that comes out of this? Because it's really not that good. It says that it's 4K. And it can do 4K up to 60, although I'm very doubtful that it's a true 4K. Because the image quality is just, it's just really, really subpar. And it's kind of sad. Because now it's 2024. And I understand that this company, Icebox, wants to make a name for itself in the budget sector. But sometimes it comes down to, is it really worth it? And are you getting your money's worth? And in this case, I really just don't think so. By the way, the frame rate's really crazy on this too. And for those wondering, now this is 4K 60 frames per second. Does it look like 4K60? You know, Icefox, they asked me not to compare this action camera to any of the flagships, like a GoPro or anything like that, because, you know, obviously it's going to show its shortcomings, but I will compare it to a very old action camera from way back when, that was a budget action camera that does shoot native 4K. And that's coming up next. So like I said, I would take the Icebox and I would compare it to a very old budget action camera. So now I've used the Akaso V50 Pro. If you remember that camera from way back when, it shoots 4K, 30 frames per second natively, and it's a real 4K, so Let's do the difference here. Let's do a first audio test. The Icebox, one, two, three, four, five. The Acaso V50 Pro, one, two, three, four, five. And then I'm just gonna walk around the pool. It is a little bit windy right now. We're waiting on a cold front to come in. But just to give you a little rough idea of image quality, stabilization while you're walking around. And uh, yeah, we'll take a look at some of the trees. So just looking at that comparison, can you tell that the V50 Pro is better? By the way, a lot of people may say, well, why don't you recommend the V50 Pro? I don't want to recommend any Acaso products anymore just because they did some shenanigans with the V50X. So if you don't remember that video, I'll put a link right up here to it. But they changed the internals. The V50X was a great camera, but when they changed the internals, it was horrible image quality it was crazy frame rate it would speed up slow down the audio was all out of sync immediate it was it was crazy but check out that video but the ice box is it any good i don't know i'm going to leave it up to you guys tell me at this portion so far in the video comment down below and tell me what do you think about the ice box All right, well, let's take a look and see what comes inside the box. You get an extremely large instruction manual. Really don't know why it's so thick. You get a 1,350 milliamp hour battery, 
And actually, you get two of them. You get a waterproof case, the action camera itself with dual color screens, quarter 20 on the bottom, USB type C on the side with a mini HDMI out and micro SD card slot, two inch rear touchscreen, power and record button are up on top. The battery drawer is that pop-off style from 2016-ish. Now turning on the camera, you're greeted with the IceFox logo. Inside you also get a one-year extension warranty card. Kind of wonder if IceFox is going to be around at the end of 2024. And also you get a plethora of accessories with this action camera should you need them. So where do I start off with this IceFox 4K action camera? Well, you know, the 4K, it just doesn't look like real 4K. And if you look at the trees in the distance here compared to the V50 Pro, you can really see that the trees in the background are really just mushy, especially when you zoom in. And you can see that the, it's all the details are all crushed in it. You can also see all the noise and artifacts in the video, like in this clip. And the colors are just really super oversaturated and there's a lot of artifacts. And that comes from its very low bit rate of 20 megabits per second. Now, stabilization with this camera is not that great and neither is the audio. Very tinny and muffled sounding. And I gotta say, when it comes to the build quality, it is very cheap feeling in the hands. And while yes, it does have a quarter 20 on the bottom, it's got this ridiculous battery drawer from the 2016 era when SJ Cam had those little battery drawers that you have to stick your nail into and pop out. Now switching between the front and rear screens takes a few seconds when you use the modal on the side and it's kind of weird because it'll take up to five or six seconds for it to switch over. You know, overall, I really don't think that IceFox is going to be around for a long time. I think it's a new upstart company and I wouldn't be surprised if they actually got these action cameras in bulk from like Alibaba from some of the big manufacturers and where you can actually get it branded the way that you want and get the firmware to where when you turn it on that it'll give you a custom logo like that and i'm not saying that's a bad thing because you know there is a lot of companies that they start up and this is how they start up they start up with what's available they brand it and then they try to grow their company so i kind of got that part i don't think ice fox is going to be around for any length of time and make an impact on the budget action camera market now i've got to say i really don't like doing reviews like this because you know it's a negative review about an action camera or about any kind of products in particular but you know this is 2024 and we've come to expect a certain amount of quality for our dollar and even being that this is a budget action camera the video quality that comes out of it is not good at all so that's why i don't like doing these kind of reviews but i do want to let the consumers out there know if something is worth it or not and in my opinion this one's not really worth it now it's really funny because i did look at some reviews online of this camera before i posted this review because i'm thinking okay is it just me and it's really funny because there's only a few reviews that actually showed video samples a lot of the reviews are just unboxing and they talk about how great that this camera is and that it's a gopro alternative i don't know what gopro that they were talking about when they're saying that it's a gopro alternative if they're trying to go back to the gopro one or not but i think even the gopro one is still better than what this is now granted this does have two screens on it but does two screens warrant an advancement does that say hey that this camera is really advanced because it's got two screens on it when the basic function that we're looking for in an action camera is video quality number one hopefully audio quality is pretty decent if you want to do some vlogging with it but let's move audio quality to number three and then number two should be image stabilization and that's three areas where this camera really lacks in so starting next Wednesday, I'm gonna do a Wednesday series. I'm gonna call it Wednesday, what camera am I using? So I'm gonna be using some action cameras, just out shooting, vlogging with it. And I'm not gonna reveal what camera it is until the next week's video. And then I'll disclose what camera it was I was using on last week's video. Why? Because I want 
you, the viewers out there, to be able to comment down in the comment section below and tell me what camera it is that I'm using because there's some of you that are going to be really savvy and be able to tell a difference. Some of you may be surprised on what action camera that I use. But that's going to be something that starts up next Wednesday, so definitely stay tuned for that. And I also want to say a big thank you to my channel members. I'll put them right over here. Thank you very much for helping support this channel because their, their channel membership does help this channel stay alive and be able to produce content for you. And if you'd like to become a channel member, all you got to do is go down to the join button, click it, choose the caveat that you want to join into. It is very much appreciated because, you know, doing product reviews can be costly and it definitely helps offset it even if it's just a dollar 99 and it helps buy me a cup of coffee because that's what kind of keeps me going in my old age so i want to thank you very much for watching if you got anything out of this video and if it was informative to you definitely give it a thumbs up because it does help with the whole youtube algorithm thing and as always i'll catch you in the next review bye bye